Today we have James Marcou on with us. James, the current assistant coach for the Harvard Crimson. Um, he's also from Long Island, undrafted and signed with the San Jose Sharks back in his playing days. Um, three seasons at UMass Amherst uh, before leaving on an entry level contract with the San Jose Sharks. Um, he is formerly a, a UMass Amherst assistant coach. University of Brown assistant coach and Milton Academy assistant coach. Uh, thanks for coming on with us today. Thanks, Wanger. It's uh, good to be on Zoom again. Got the Zoom thing down. Yeah, yeah you must be talking with a lot of different uh, coaches, but also players during during uh, this time. Yeah, it's uh, you know new uh, new feather in the cap. I guess you learn how to use different. Uh, Thing, you know, avenues of technology. So see, see some familiar faces on Zoom, you know, whether it's uh, you miss time from, from being at the office, but we get on Zoom, you know, every, yeah. every week. Get yeah. to see the makes, guys. You, it makes you even busier and got to do different things. Uh, like I had mentioned before that you're doing video, video meetings and stuff and, and clipping stuff just to get ready for what's to come. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a good, uh, technology to learn you know use it during the season kind of adapt and you know maybe you're you're doing some video sessions on zoom with with your players throughout the year and and uh or you're just you know getting face to face with some some recruits and you're you're talking to them and uh keeping the connection going a little bit during these tough times yeah yeah um video teaching these days and, and interaction communication is all huge um yeah, now that it's just kind of proving that with uh, this whole pandemic and, and it's also promoting a lot of people that do things online, not just through the hockey world, but workouts online for, for the general public that when all the gyms were shut down. But um, yeah, it's, it's teaching a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And uh, yeah, the younger... I made it to the virtual workouts yet on Zoom. <laughs> you hear the, you know, some yeah. of these... You know, camps and stuff coming virtually I'm not surprised but so do you want to introduce yourself a, a little bit more of uh the things maybe that I missed um through that introduction um yeah who you are where you grew up from and and some things from uh Long Island and uh, like you said and grew up with a younger brother and older sister uh my my brother and I played together for quite some time whether it was in Waterloo um, in the USHL and um, you played with my brother pro a little bit and yeah a couple of years um, at UMass Amherst so great experience playing with with your brother and um, you know he's coaching now and and I'm coaching now so it's cool to see the uh, the, the uh, you know development as players and now coaches and we're always bouncing ideas off each other and always heckling each other and yeah uh, but yeah no it, it was uh, it's good to have you know someone like that close in age, 18 months younger. So he was a big, big uh, part of our development together as a player. And now we're, we're close and t talking a lot as coaches. So we grew up together in Long Island, played in Waterloo, um, went from Waterloo to, to UMass Amherst. And, and then uh, from UMass signed uh, with the Sharks and played in uh, the American League for a year and a half and got injured um, before retiring due to uh, some head and neck injuries. Right, right, yeah, and we can go into that uh, as we as we keep continuing to talk here. So, as a Harvard assistant coach and all your coaching experience, um, and even your playing experience in juniors in the USHL, can you explain a little bit to the the followers about the recruiting process um, of even when you're playing, or even as when you're scouting? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I committed to, you know, verbally committed to UMass when I was in, you know, I think 10th or 10th grade, maybe really early on one of the uh, first players to commit um, for my age. And, you know, looking back on it, it's kind of kind of a crazy thing to think about um, choosing your college when you're that young. But I think you've saw that trend continue on and recruiting is, uh, you know, picked up a lot and now with social media it's it's uh you know it's a big thing for youth hockey and parents and, and players and the junior hockey 
world is, you know, it's still the same as when I was playing, but you know, for, as a coach at Harvard, we just, you have to identify some, some players that fit um, your, into your team culture. And obviously at a place like Harvard academics comes into the, uh, the picture a little bit more heavily than some other, um, you know, programs, but you know, that's half the battle with, with these, with some of these players is just making sure their academics are, are in check. And then, you know, obviously the hockey end's got to, um, you know, measure up as well. So just keeping, keeping, uh, you know, relationships with, with coaches and, and, and players and trying to make sure you're recruiting good kids and um, identifying players that kind of fit, fit your program and, and your culture. Yeah. Yeah. Question that I think some of the, players and parents might have for you is um you know when you you have a hockey team but also you are harvard university and well known around the world is it harder for you to find players um you know given on the academics is so much plays a bigger role do you think yeah i think our i think our player pool is maybe smaller in you know in the overall, you know, picture, but, um, there's plenty of smart, smart players out there. I think that, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, you, you have your niche in regional regions and, and, uh, at a place like Harvard, you can go anywhere with, uh, and, and find players. So, um, we don't really, you know, narrow in on too many, you know, obviously, um, proximity of Massachusetts and, and, and the school being in Massachusetts, you know, we get a good, good look at those prep school players in, in, in New England. But I think, you know, we've, we've had a lot of players from British Columbia and, and in Canada that have done very well. And, you know, from the, from the brand of Harvard, it's, it's good to have that to go out and, and, and uh, you know, no, have no limitations on where you can get players from. So yeah. you have any, players out west this way that you can name some player names uh on the team currently uh we just graduated uh you know the Col- uh, kerfoot and i think him and his brother yeah uh, they yeah. came through the, the program and um you know we've had guys playing in the bchl um and you know we we scout that league and you know the uh some of the midget uh prep teams out there that have good good programs but yeah we've we've had some good vancouver guys and and, and you know i think uh the the good thing about vancouver is it's uh and that you know the area of british columbia it's you know there's good education out there so that's got to be a spot that we're you know paying attention to pretty closely so right yeah um i know another player that actually comes out to a lot of sessions is marina mcdonald she plays on the women's team 